Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University. I've been teaching histology for 30 years or so. Uh, and today we're going to talk about epithelium uh, and junctions. Epithelium and junction uh, with features and functions of simple squamous, uh, stratified squamous with keratinized and non-keratinized uh, stratified cuboidal, pseudo-stratified columnar with ciliated cells epithelium and transitional epithelium. Now, if we look at simple squamous epithelium uh, and view it uh, uh, on the side, we see it like that. That's your typical thing. But if you if you view it face on, you see that these flattened cells are really oval in the other dimension, uh, and the cell is flat, and that's what we see. And we see in the cytoplasm of the cell, it is squamous cell, and you can see it in this. Uh, the, the capillaries, you can see it in the venules, you can see it in the valves. All these are simple squamous epithelium that we see here, that line of blood vessels and also lymphatics. You can see them right here. These are the endothelial cells, uh, simple squamous uh, epithelium, which is, uh, this happened to be the endothelium because remember it comes from uh, the mesoderm. Uh, also, uh, simple squamous epithelium are other blood vessels. You can see right here, this arteriole has uh, uh, these cells in through there. Uh, lymphatic here, again, has simple squamous uh, epithelium, the valves and the spermatic cord. We can see the endothelial cells on the surface of this uh, lymphatic and their little vein. All these blood vessels and all have uh, endothelial cells. Uh, simple squamous epithelium, which is known as endothelium. And here we can see another one of those endothelial cells here at, like, at the electron microscopic level. You actually see two of these. This is one cell here, and then there's another cell there, and you can see the junctions where one cell is making junctions, and those junctions are the same. Zonia occluding, zonia adherence, macular adherence. But these are simple squamous, simple flat cells that you can see. This one actually has a little pericyte as well. And here we see a little parasite just outside uh, uh, the endothelial cell, but in, actually in the basal lamina uh, of the uh, endothelial cell. Other types of, uh, of epithelia uh, is uh, stratified squamous epithelium. Sometimes it can have hair follicles, as you see here. Other times it can not can be very cratinized in the case of like a sole of your foot or someplace. Here's stratified squamous epithelium cratinized. You can see uh, this need not be that dark, but there are cells that are dead cells uh, who no longer have the organelles inside there, no longer has a nucleus there. And it's stratified as multiple layers in through there. And cells differentiate, uh, they divide in the very base. Uh, and these, of course, have the basal lamina and basement membrane down through there. And then they differentiate, differentiate as they go to the surface. So this is a, a epidermis that we're talking about. There's a air in through there. There's a cretinized uh, stratum corneum in through there. And then we can see the uh, desmosomal connections, uh, which makes it like a little spines. So these are the desmosomes holding tight between uh, uh, adjacent cells. Uh, and uh, a, a stratified cuboidal epithelium we only find that uh, in sweat duct uh, the glands. Uh, the, in the glands, you have the ducts that take the sweat to the surface, and it's those sweat ducts that have stratified more than one layer cuboidal uh, epithelium. Also, we have the tongue. The tongue, uh, and here it's a vagina too. Both of those have stratified squamous epithelium, but it's non cratinized. Uh, it does not have a stratum corneum on the surface. You can have it in the case of a tongue in certain places uh, where you have uh, projections, uh, and, and especially like a cat or something that, that has a real rough tongue. So we have stratified squamous up the non cratinized and we note that by the fact that you have nuclei that goes all the way to the surface. So this is a tongue, and this is the vagina. A different type of epithelium is in the airway. So this is part of the trachea. There's the cartilage that we see. And this is uh, uh, a certain type of epithelium, pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is ciliated and have goblet cells as well. And we can see that here. This, you can see the goblet cells. You can see the cilia on the surface. Uh, but all the cells touch the base. Another characteristic about the 
the trachea epithelium, the respiratory epithelium, it has a very big basement membrane. Actually, it's the basal lamina that you can you can uh, see there. And so, simple squamous epithelium line the airways. Remember, I told you that all substance, including gas, has to go through epithelium. Well, simple squamous epithelium lines the airways, but the conducting portion of the respiratory system have this respiratory epithelium, which is pseudostrived by columnar epithelium, uh, which has ciliated cells and goblet cells. Uh, and that's what we see here. And below the surfaces, you have these plasma cells to produce antibodies to project uh, out in through here. You see the cilia on these cells. You can see the basal bodies of these cilia. All these cells touch the base. They don't all touch the top. And if you look at a certain place in the conducting portion of the respiratory system, this is where you have the true, vols uh, true vocal cords. And the true vocal cords doesn't have respiratory epithelium. Uh, it has stratified squamous epithelium because that's the type of epithelium that's on your skin. That's the type uh, that's in your, in your uh, esophagus uh, to withstand abrasion. And, and so in order to withstand the mechanical stress of vibration of the vocal cord, you have to have stratified squamous uh, epithelium. Other places you have pseudostratified columnar epithelium called respiratory epithelium. Uh, that is, until you get to the lungs, and then you can have a uh, simple squamous epithelium. And here we see in a, a urinary uh, bladder, uh, a, we have transitional epithelium. And transitional epithelium, remember, it has this kind of flocculent uh, stuff, a kind of bulging. You can see the bulgingness of the cells on the surface here in the vagina, and there's the ureter. Both have urinary system uh, has... Uh, transitional epithelium. If we look at one of these images, this is an image of the wall of the urinary bladder. This is the lumen of the bladder, and we have transitional epithelium with these little arches at the surface and through here in multiple layers of cells. Uh, also on the other side, in the outside of the cavity and through there, we have mesothelium. So let's just take a look at this um, uh, tissue here. And we'll be able to look and see. Uh, we uh, have this image to come in, and we'll be able to see uh, the different layers. And so, if we uh, uh, look at uh, the transitional epithelium on the surface, you see this is multiple layers and this kind of arc like shape on the surface is characteristic of transitional epithelium. Uh, also, if you look at blood vessels, you see. Uh, simple squamous epithelium, which is really the endothelium. Remember, it comes from the mesoderm. And here we can see it again. These flattened cells on the surface uh, are uh, um, uh, endothelial cells. And if we move to the outside, uh, we can see another group of cells in through there. These are the mesothelial cells. The mesothelial cells that line the outside cavity. Mesothelium uh, provides a slick surface so that the bladder, when it fills and empties, uh, it can move uh, in relation to other structures in there because it is kind of uh, oily or uh, lubricant, uh, slick, slick, and be able to uh, to slide around. So in these, we see three different types. We see the the transitional epithelium, we see the mesothelium, which can be kind of squamous, or sometimes we can see them all along through there. Uh, uh, they could use a cuboidal, but it can be squamous, as we see there. And of course, simple squamous epithelium that we see here uh, in blood vessels. In the tongue, we have stratified squamous epithelium, but also you have glands. And some of those glands are mucus, uh, mucus gland, like there's one cell of the mucus gland, it's got uh, this uh, light, light uh, mucus that you see in a flattened nucleus, as opposed to a serous gland, is more uh, red, um, uh, and the nucleus is more uh, spherical, uh, not flattened at the base, because this is serous or more prognaceous as opposed to a more mucus type secretion. And over here we can see the serous and the mucus, 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 all in through there. This is serous. Uh, so in summary, uh, epithelia uh, has different functions. 
uh, it uh, forms the outer protective surface of the epidermis of the skin, forms glands, it lines cavities, uh, uh, it also lines uh, blood vessels uh, as well. All substances, including gases, normally received or given off by the body must go through uh, epithelium. Questions on epithelia. What item is or characteristic of epithelia? Secretory cells of glands? Yes. Uh, uh, cells cover organs? Yes. Line the urinary tract? Lines all openings to the outside of the body, A, B, and C. Which junction description pair matches? Zonia occlutens? Tight junctions around the cell? Yes, it makes a belt, hence the word zonual. Occlusion, it's a tight junction, prevent things from going through. Zonia adherence, adhering junction around the cell? Yes, it's a belt of a hearing junction. Uh, hemodesmosome, spot attachment of cells to the connective tissue below? True, uh, it's at the bottom of the cells. And it's hemo because it's a half a desmosome and it attaches to connective tissue below. So the answer is A, B, and C, or E. Which embryologic origin distribution of epithelium do not match? Do not match. Endoderm, endothelium. No, endothelium comes from the mesoderm. Uh, endoderm, uh, uh, GI tract? Yes. Uh, mesoderm, mesothelium? Yes. Mesothelium and endothelium come from the mesoderm. Ectoderm, mammary gland, yes. Ectoderm, um, uh, epidermis, yes. So hopefully these questions will help out. We want to thank the many uh, books that uh, for which uh, 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 materials were taken uh, to illustrate things. These were the original source, and we want to thank the original source of these uh, various things and body worlds for for their sample. Uh, here we see a ranch just south of Fort Stockton, Texas, and this is on the road to Big Bend, uh, Texas. So this is the end of epithelium injunctions, that is the features and functions of simple squamous epithelium, stratified squamous with keratinized and non-keratinized cells, uh, stratified cuboidal, uh, pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium with cilia, uh, and transitional epithelium. Thank you.